Um, welcome, and uh, your, I'm Ann Geldner. Your virtual tour of my studio begins with a video, then a, a PowerPoint presentation of some of my work I did in metal. After this, I will be showing you around the studio to show and demonstrate the machines and tools I use. After, I would love to answer any questions. So now we'll start with the video. Let's close that. Come on. <laughs> there. <laughs> Does the video have sound? It does not. No. Okay. So this is our lobby and our classroom area. We host about 20 students each semester uh, to learn welding and they learn in that little blue area. This is some of our handiwork. Yeah. Those benches are park benches. Don't try to move them. They're made of steel. This is our classroom area. Yeah, help me. <laughs> And we equip the students with all their textbooks and the things that they need to learn to weld. Now we're gonna head into the welding lab. So those blue curtains help you from being sunburned. <laughs> <laughs> and it's pretty awesome size back here. All the latest technology. Yeah. <laughs> Including compressors that start whenever they feel like it. These are TIG welding bays. Basically, great place to learn how to do metal fabrication and metal working. Mm -hmm. And you know, all, all this equipment you're looking at is uh, equipment that I get to use with my, having my studio there. All right. Okay. Now we'll start with the PowerPoint. Get that. Oh, this thing is in the way. All right. And how and we turn how do we turn that? Okay. Um, what we are going to do, I'm going to be showing you is some of the art uh, artwork that I've done throughout the years. I started in 1905 uh, where I took a basic welding course and um, this one here is Becca okay oh, thanks <laughs> uh, this is Wen song and um, this was created in 2011 then the next one and now also you're going to be seeing maquettes along with it Becca triumphs is a sculpture that I wanted to work with um, having, uh, making steel look organic by curving and moving it around the rock there. And it look, gives it a growth effect. The next one is uh, free fall. This is where I was experimenting with using circles, given a sense of uh, continuous uh, grow, uh, swirl. And once I did finished it, I realized that I needed something floating inside it. So I created some bodies. I did body casting and made the bodies out of little tiny, um, they're called slugs. They're a byproduct of uh, Moran Ironworks. Ernie is a vessel form that I did. And in the front of it to the far side, you'll see the maquette in front of me. 
uh, and you can see the size I made it. The next one is the cross. The cross is a, um, was a first, I worked with Tom Moran with this one and it went in St. Anthony's Church in Mackinac City. We actually had to build a brace behind the wall for it to hold on to, to be able to support it. So um, Moran Ironworks are the people for engineering. I did the, I'm here to make the fun arts. And um, on this one, I made the texture look like wood. The steel by gouging is air arcing and I gouged metal out of the steel to make it look like wood. The next one was uh, Millie and Miller. It's an abstract piece. The large one is in um, Millersburg and Millie um, is a smaller one. That's only five foot. And that was, uh, I used steel, stainless steel and copper in this one. The next one was a Lutheran Rose, Rose Bell Tower. That is 40 foot tall. I designed it, Moran Ironworks built the structure. I created the uh, inserts of the 15 foot um, cross there we're looking at, and I TIG welded it all. And the Lutheran Rose is all stainless steel and copper. And um, then you can see to the uh, far right how um, they, we brought it over there and, and lifted it and put it in place. The next one is Departure, which is in Alpena. That was uh, one of the, your first uh, piece in a while for at Duck Park. And it's the Great Blue Herons I did. And on this, I wanted to show flight of the Great Blue Herons. So the rod extending out that connected, connected to the uh, great blue herons actually move. Uh, Tom uh, Moran helped me make it so it worked that way. Duck landing, the landing duck, you're going to see how I actually start gridding the tables. I use a, a form um, design technique and it's called the golden ratio and that's uh it's all about balancing and if you don't so the grid gives me the mathematical um area to work with and everything balances out compositionally correct and you can see how i studied the bird then i put it on a grid i cut um all the feathers out program them on a cnc and then I put them together and TIG weld them. Then the body, you can see how I uh, do a silhouette of the body shape. Then I make the ribs and then I add stock to make the body. And then that's all welded into a solid piece. Then you're going to see it in the middle. You can see the picture I wanted to uh, duplicate. The wings, the body and the tail and to the far right. You're going to see the bird, the duck um, landing like uh, on a, oh, a piece of mountain de, on a piece of uh, wood that I created with steel. This is all steel. And uh, part of this project was I went to a gallery and saw a whole bunch of bronze casting. And I thought, well, I can do that. So I came back and uh, made that look like a bronze casting. So the next one is my um, go fish that is in um, Alpena also. And that um, I did a series, this one was um, about the fisheries, it's on the rock. And um, the whole idea was not make realistic fish, but make fish look like more of expressionistic wise. So I made up the fish, gave them to my husband and showed them to his fishing friends. So if they could tell me what the fish was, then that's the one I made. Because if I wanted a rainbow trout, they had to say it was a rainbow trout right off the bat. So that was a fun one that I was able to do. 
and that has copper, stainless, uh, brass, and steel in that one. And the next one is the gate series. This is where I uh, create uh, the framework. And then I take found um, tools, repurpose them. I look for shapes and I cut them up. And so it's a repurposed uh, form of artwork. And I do this to relax. And it's uh, very fun to do. It's like making a puzzle. So I'm a, I'm a puzzle put. I, so I love doing these to, if I have a few minutes left. So the next one is a Hummingbird and Cosmos. Hummingbird and Cosmos was a, a commission piece. And um, here you can see I made a huge hummingbird because I wasn't going to make a whole bunch of little two inch ones. So this one is a three foot one. And uh, so again, I studied the body and it was all grafted out before I did it. Same with the flower. All flowers are done the exact same way. And um, so um, everything I do has the same grid work on it when I start it. The next one was sales. Sales can be, because um, it is a very um, simple design, but these uh, take an awful lot to do because of the elegance of the lines. And this is all done in stainless steel, polished a satin finish. And the next one is uh, emerging. Emerging, I think you guys in Alpina are seeing this because Tim picked up the maquette and this is uh, for um, the next sculpture for this uh, coming year. And it's about um, creating the feel of sails, uh, racing across the water. So emerging I did is like the sails are intertwining and catching the wind with the rigging going on. So that's uh, one of the maquettes I made for you guys to review. The next one, I'm going to be showing you is the Eagle in the Rock. This is a memorial sculpture for a fallen soldier. It's steel, stainless steel, brass, and it's granite. So the next one you're going to see, I didn't have to design this one because I'm copying a pre-made sculpture. The sculpture in front of you is a wooden sculpture. It got it rotted and fell apart. So they brought the wooden part to me, as you can see with the wings broken off. The platoon he was in was called the rock. So I said, instead of me creating a, a metal rock, I said, bring in your own rock. I didn't realize he was going to bring me a four ton rock in. So the next picture you're going to see is how I start a sculpture. Um, to do uh, any type of animal, you have to study it uh, from the head. You graft out the head. You, you want all the pictures you can all around you at all times. Uh, feathers, how many feathers are in the wing? What style they are? What um, different shapes they are? And you want the layers that are in the feather. And you can see some of the things that I surround myself when I start making a piece. The next, you'll see the wing, how I grafted it out. And I actually go and make it real, um, I scale it right to size. So uh, that's a four foot wing. And I drew it, drew all the feathers in. And at this point, I can now um, CAD draw everything in the computer and then I can then start uh, burning them out. If I hand cut 400, 500 feathers, I would never get done. And a computer generated uh, plasma table will do this in just a few minutes. Uh, so that's why um, it's real important to pre-design everything ahead of time and then be able to um, use some extra tools we have here at the school. And then the next one you're going to see 
the layout, how I got all the feathers lined up. And you can see the, uh, the material and also the gridding of my table. All my tables, whenever I start working on anything, have a grid. And then I can lay out my wing in the design that um, is of the eagle. And so the eagle wing has four, five layers to it. And um, once you look from the top to the bottom, they're all pretty close together, you know, pretty exact like I did it. So the next one I have is the body. Again, as the duck, I did the shape of the eagle I wanted. And then I started to do a rib cage. And then I started to line it with um, stock to give it the body. And then I weld the bead, the weld, I weld down one after layer it with a, a weld to make the texture I wanted to kind of give it a fluffy, you know, feathery texture. So the next one, you'll see the body laid out. The body there, you can see how I did the body kind of rough. And then the head and the tail are stainless steel. And then the wings are steel. So um, now I get to put it together. And here you can see the eagle and the very top part of it is called cap feathers. That's what I was making on that was putting the cap feathers. They actually cap over the wings to give it a nice finished look. And then at this point, I braised the beak. Brazing is uh, putting brass on top of the, st the steel. So it has that beautiful, shiny brass look. And then, the, and then the next one, you'll see the claws for the eagle I designed. The talons are two inches long, I couldn't believe it. So I put my hand next to it to show you the size that um, they are. And again, this is brazing and it is uh, make, having uh, brass on top of the steel. And then the next one is the uh, drilling the rock and welding to the base. You can see me with the uh, drill drilling the holes and uh, then um, underneath, you can see I went and welded the bolts to the plate. And the next one, then we have to drill on top of the rock. And we went and put bolts into the rock. And then there's Mike Rushlow. He helps me. He's the machinist and an instructor here. And he helped me. Uh, he, he's really good at measuring. And um, he helps me to make sure I'm stay, I'm level, which is difficult at times to do. So you can see him helping me there. The next one, the eagles landed. So we got the eagle on the rock and the claws ready to be placed. And so um, you're going to see now what I did with the vines. I took stock, you can see the stock, they come in just, 20 foot long pieces. I cur bend and curve them. And then I've made them look like vines coming up the back. And um, this will hide uh, some of the, uh, what is it? The things I don't want people to see. And also it's holding um, some of the emblems on that I have to put on it. And so the next is uh, the eagle. We have a flag. That's a, we had a metal flag with the emblem on there and all these different emblems, I have to paint them. And um, they're all bolted into the rock. And you can see on the back where it says honor and remember, those are the vines that are um, actually hold, helping um, hold things on and it gives it a little bit more of a, a interesting look. So um, now I'd like to give uh, uh, 
thanks to Tom Moran, Moran Ironworks, Mike Rushlow, Industrial Arts Institute, and the staff of Industrial Arts Institute of Onaway, Michigan, and Stephanie too. So now what we're going to do is go around the studio and um, start showing you some of the um, fun tools I have. Is there any questions anyone wants or we'll start going around the studio? Okay. Okay, so let's go and yeah. So Stephanie's going to walk around and um, with me and I'm going to show you some of the um, tools I use, okay? And Steph, um, let's do the, Mike, do you want me to do yours first? Yeah, so uh, what we're going to do is brazing. Mike Rushlow is going to, uh, has been um, getting this uh, heated up. And now, yeah, okay. And, and let's go over to see Mike. Okay. So my mic is going to be porch. And what you want to be able to do is um, get it heated up. This is one tool that is uh, is really fun to work with. And um, Mike now is getting the flame to get some nice heat to it. You can see the cone in the middle. And he'll have a nice um, heat going on, which the temperature that Mike's working with right now is about 850 degrees to maybe 1200. And um, he has a, just a piece of stock he's working with. And those rods are brass. So the brass is being put over the steel. And the flux that he uses on that is what it's like a, the and here the glue, I guess you'd call it, that adheres the brass uh, helps us make it stick to it. Because you can't just melt brass on steel. You have to have some type of additive to it. But you can see the nice heat that he's getting on the rod. And, and you just feed in the brass rod, and then you can create your design with it. It's actually a lot of fun to work and very relaxing. Mike makes it look a lot easier than I would do it. With this uh, torch set, you can cut metal with a different uh, torch head and um, heat up metal so you can bend it. So the to have a torch set is very important to have in a studio. I had a very hard time with it because I always fear I didn't like the mixing of the gases. And I've always heard horror stories of it, but Mike has taught me to respect it and actually I love using it now. You do, but I do have a, a very full respect on working with a torch. So Anne, we've had a couple of comments. Uh-huh. Um, Anne Kay told us that your work is beautiful. Well, thank you. I agree. And another uh, gentleman commented that it's very interesting to hear fluffy as a part of the description of anything that you're doing with metal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's the truth. Yeah, because that's what um, I look at metal as uh, fun. Um, you can curve it, move it any way you want. But you can see here what Mike has done. And here you're going to see the brass coming as it cools off. You're going to see the brass now. Thank you, Mr. Rushlow. <laughs> Again, when you work with uh, any type of torches, a lot of metal, you're going to see us always wearing eye protection. And you always have to have, um, if it's white, you wear eye protection. That's the whole rule. If, the, if you see white, it's time to put something on your eyes. So 
now you're going to see this. You're going to see the nice brass coming out on it. See it? See how that looks? And then can you, um, I'll show you now that we can go over to the eagle to show you over here. You can see the, how I did the feet and then also the beak. What material did you use for the claws? What material did you use? It's just steel. And then I brazed over it. Okay, so, so so it would be uh steel and brass. Okay. I'm gonna mute this here. Okay. Hold on for just a second. Okay. So the neck yeah, are they still know. hearing me? Where where will the uh, okay. eagle be? So the next created? one I'm gonna show you the most important tool in a studio. That's your broom. <laughs> So that's the most important to, to one. You always remember that. So my rooms are very important. This is called an iron mover. And an iron mover is uh, I can cut, curve anything on this machine here. So what I'm going to show, show you here on this end, you can take some metal, and let's say you just wanted a little piece taken out of it. Or you want to take a bigger chunk. It just bites it right off. So if you were um, making a, uh, needed a certain, just a little bit cut off, you just go and take, you can just dip it right off. So I love this. I use this one all the time. Then when you go to the middle part right here, you can now take flat, bring it through here, and it shears it off. So this is a very handy, but I only have this much space for a shear. But it's that I use a lot of. This part, we have different dyes on this. We take stock like this. And we now can make it have a little character going on. Okay. I start now making this not look so stiff and boring. I'm starting to give a little bit. You can see how it's starting to have a little more growth. This is how I do it. I fit things on a rock. I go and I place it and I keep coming back and curving it until it matches. And that, because you can't weld on rock because it'll blow up. And I don't want to blow up. So the next one is I use tons of different grinders and sanders. And you can see some of my little grumbles are this big and then I have uh, my bigger ones like my belt uh, my drum sander that's like a heaven for my stainless steel so um sanding is a big part of this industry and um, you just have to know the right pad and uh, sandpaper to use and everything so I use all these this is just a fraction of the stuff I use. But here you can see the stock, how it comes in, and how you can curve it the way you like it. Okay. So this is me. Another thing I'd like to, uh, real quick before we get to plasma, when I make my um, feathers for my birds, my sculptures or anything, I use uh, my CNC CAD programming. This way I can make small, you know, them small to any size. And if my feathers, let's say I'm a half an inch wrong, well, I can reprogram it to shrink it down maybe 5% or anything to make it fit perfectly. So the CNC machine 
is one of my to-go machines for almost all my sculptures because I program, I draw them up like this one. This is emerging. This is what I call a drawing. Yes, right here. That's a drawing to me. Now I take this and I graft it on, I cut it all off and then I graft the shape onto uh, the graft paper. And then I make sure everything is balanced properly. The curves are really nice because you can see how jagged is the edge. Well, I go and make sure they're all nice, program them in my CAD, and then I get them cut out. So um, the mock cat that you have in Alpina, you'll see how nice and smooth everything is. Because your hand can't hold, uh, make a beautiful circle or anything like that. So uh, we went through this on the, the oxacetylene torch. That is a must to have in the studio. So now what I'm going to do is we're going to go over for uh, MIG welding. And so here. And MIG welding is a type of, uh, you know, when you think of welding, you know, we're talking, That's what you see people welding all around. So you have to protect your eyes. And I have a, sh a nine shield on. Mike was having, he had over there a shield five to protect his eyes. So what I'm going to do is see how I curved the, uh, I got a piece of stock and I curved. So to make the vines, I'm going to do this. You can see how the vines are curved onto the rock. So here, I got. So what you're going to see is run a few beads, okay? Always have your ground. like this over there in the school, I would fail. <laughs> but what I'm welding is I'm looking for texture. I use my welder as a sculpting tool. So I adjust my uh, amps and wire feed to make the uh, molten metal coming when I get it to do what I want it to do. And um, it holds everything together, but if I was putting a structure together that I would have to weld a completely a different way. So that's MIG welding is it's a hard wire and it's very versatile because I can move around. So that's how I did the body on the eagle. You can see how I welded all that body together and you can see how I made it. So it's textured. I have texture in it. And it's how I did uh, set the machine at. And then also the vines were done that way. So the next thing I'm going to show you is called TIG welding. And TIG welding is what I, uh, another way, um, you're going to see it's not as, uh, how do you say, masculine? Oh, I want to show you one more thing. How you weld, you'll notice on the flag, 
and my um, emblems, you can't see no welds. And the reason you don't see welds is because I plug weld. And that is when you get everything together like this, you go and turn around and you have holes in that. And then all I do is just fill in the holes like this. What you do is I'm filling the holes in and this is what's going to happen. You don't see nothing in the front and the back I round it so you can't tell I welded it from the back. So it's just a welding technique that uh, we do to have a nice clean look when you do artwork on that. And then you're going to see how fine tape welding is. Tape welding will be all done here. What you want to have, you can see how fine the welds are. You're going to see my wings were all done with TIG welding because all you want is just to have a little bit, you don't want no bulky weld, you want it to be flat and as uh, clean as possible. And uh, so you'll see how we do it. And you'll see you had splatter when I was welding with this. Watch what happens with TIG welding. I have a foot pedal that I'm working with, this will be, and then watch how clean it is. now how nice of a weld you get with TIG welding. And when you weld stainless steel, you want to see the iridescent. I would get probably an A for that. So um, TIG welding is very important on um, different types of metal. Um, you can, um, you have your rods, all different rods. What I did was call, called a tagginess welding. That is when I weld two pieces of metal together without a filler. I'm melting metal to metal. And the only way you can do that if you have a real tight fit. If I don't have a tight fit, I add filler weld to it. But you can aluminum weld, you can brass, you can copper, you can get all that stuff with TIG welding. So the next one I want to show you, um, again, let me show you, I want to bring this up to show you the size, you know, like how I start a drawing. I, I do my drawings on craft paper. And then you can see the numbers, the sizes I have. And then um, this is how I made the wing, see? And you can see how I got the, the direction the um, feathers go and everything. So when you go up here, because this is the life size, so when you come up here, see how they all fit? 
in place. So that's um, real important on um, layout. If you don't do this, you couldn't make a beautiful wing that would go like that. And um, next, I'm going to take you to uh, the plasma table. This is hand plasma. And uh, right through the So this is hand plasma. Like I said before, how you can take metal and make it any way you want it to look. This is a wooden texture that I did like for the cross in um, that big uh, 14 foot cross I did. And also if you can go over to the duck over here, mm -hmm. The, I air art, I gouged it out, and then I plasma gouged it too. We won't be able to do air arcing because it is, um, I wouldn't, I can't, it's loud. <laughs> so then, so here, this is so much fun. A plasma hand done plasma. Very easy. It's like holding lightning in your hand. It's the fourth element. And it is all it is, is air and electricity. And it's about four, 40,000 degrees I'm holding when I go and cut. Now I'll show you how, how um, free you are when you get this. camera off just because I don't want to make people sick when we move around a lot but let me give you a bird's eye view of this is Anne's entire studio and on to the plasma table Somebody asked, is this a school? And yes, it is a school. We have a 19 week comprehensive welding program going on here behind us, which is the other noise that you hear. We've got 20 students right now. Um, they'll be industry ready at the end of graduation in 19 weeks. So that was in answer to that question. Sorry, we didn't get to that a little sooner. Okay. All right, here we are at the plasma table. Okay, this is our, my plasma area. This is a CNC machine. This is uh, the programming. I program. I tell the computer how thick the metal is, how fast I want it to go. I basically, you saw how I did my hand. I was real free at it. Well, I have to now tell the machine to do what I want it to do. Um, when you have this, the, um, you have a torch mate 
the CAD program is what um, I do all my programming in. And it is just like any type of CAD. It'll come up here in a second. And it, again, we're always dealing with that grid. And um, I always will have, um, uh, so like I went and had this in um, for wording. So a lot of like signs and everything, you can use that for it. But this is all pad in. And what's uh, nice about this, so it is nice to always have this, uh, this part of a studio if you can, because it is quite expensive. So now we're here on the table. Uh, and I programmed it. I'm going to have you look at, watch this. I'll have Stephanie stand by what the screen I programmed in, and you're going to watch how the torch reads. All those are called nodes, and it's uh, quite neat. So I'm going to go to program zero. Everything is done, done in axis. And what I'm going to now, what's going to happen when that torch head comes down, it's going to spark and it will start cutting. So um, be ready for that spark. So now we're going to run the job and you're going to see how it goes. And um, I used a shield to read for that.
Now, this is the air cool. We had 4,000 degrees, and I can pick this up because it's water cool. So now we have a nice little Michigan roof. So, so we got that. But again, I now can make this any size I want it. I can bring it to a three foot because I've already programmed it in. So that will be. So let's get back into the other side of the studio. Okay. okay. Is there any questions or answers? I'll take it from here. How do I do this? There you go. Okay. Now, now there's any questions or answers. Okay, go ahead. I, I muted your device. <laughs> we did have a question regarding um, classes and Ann does yes. do some amazing ornamental welding classes. Uh, I know that ACC has a welding program as well, but our classes and information on them can be found at IAIWorks.com. It's IAI as an Industrial Arts Institute works w-o-r-k-s dot com and ornamental welding classes are the information yeah. is, is right there i take in the ornamental uh most of them don't even have any welding experience at all i take them from um they come in i i show them all the uh, safety clothing how to wear everything i throw them in the back here with me and we start welding and I have several different projects that will teach them how to uh, do different joints. And then um, I got like exercises and they actually come out with some pretty cool stuff after it's only 24 hours, but they make uh, some neat stuff in 24 hours. So. The, the classes that you have at the uh, I, IAI are really oriented towards uh, structural welding this is a unique class you have which is oriented towards the ornamental and decorative type of welding right right correct but see i started out in a basic welding course to be able to learn to weld because you can't um you have to learn how to do everything before you can screw it up so like i learned all the proper ways of welding from your stick welding, your MIG welding, all your different flux core, all that. So I know how to uh, create the textures I want because I know how to run the machines. That's what IAI does. They, uh, the courses teach you how to be a good welder. I, in turn, uh, teach you how to have fun and uh, use uh, your imagination with uh, machines. How's that? Is, that it, thing? is it necessary though to have welding experience before you start? No, you, you okay. don't need no welding experience at all. And a lot of times I get is people that are wanting just their garage to have a, a little type of workshop. Um, we actually will um, design a workshop for them, tools that you should have and down the road which you can get and also you can get welders that are pretty decent for 110 electric you don't have to put in a 240 nothing like that um i uh we demonstrate on all different types of machines i actually have students bring me their welding equipment and then we will teach them how to weld with their equipment so it turns out to be a nice thing. They have a good time. Yeah. Oh, right here. Is that, is that the questions popped up? Let's see. Do you know the cost of your class and the cost of the 19-week program? 
I don't. Um, what is it? Course class for um, for ornamental welding is oh I think six hundred or six sixty. Yeah, that includes all your equipment, all the your gear, your welding hood, for your jacket. Class? Yeah, okay, the jacket, and I think they have it separated now. I don't know. Yeah. I they, they have to cut, talk to Tammy. The information the information is on the web, but I know it's around six hundred dollars. The comprehensive welding program that we're running right now for nineteen weeks that produces industry ready welders um, ready to go out to work is thirteen hundred seven hundred and fifty dollars. Thirteen thousand. Yes, okay. Thir thirteen thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars. Thank you. And that's for 19, 19, weeks. 19 weeks, and that's eight hours a day. Yes. By uh, five days a week. Yes. I mean, it's it's really intense. Uh, basic welding, they have a adult thing. Again, that's only like 24 hours and it's held, um, last one was held on a Saturday morning. And so again, that's like 24 hours and that's kind of a, uh, if you haven't had any type of training at all in welding, I tell people get a basic welding course first. That will um, get you uh, aware of the machines and if you like it. Um, the first time I, I went and art, did a stick weld, I just loved it. And I couldn't get enough of the machines. So that's why I stuck to it. I was a painter and a potter. And I wanted my artwork outside and metal was the only way to go. So I, um, I had a wonderful experience and the teachers are unbelievable. So I really like it. On this one, I see your husband, the autism, um, help with TIG welding. Um, what we do um, on basic, on almost any of our classes here, is if anyone has any type of a problem or if they um, need extra help, we give that to them. We, um, some people catch on real good. Some people need a little, a little more instruction. That doesn't bother us at all because in the end, everyone gets to have a fun, ex a good uh, educational experience. Stephanie. The cross you made for the church, was that cross fabricated or was that solid steel? It's fabricated. Um, I, I, um, a lot of people, uh, it's, it is, it's a structure. I had to build an inside structure, but it's all fabricated. I just made it look solid. It must have been heavy enough if you gouged it to give it a texture. Yeah, if that one was, uh, that was fun. We gouged it because that was a uh, 15 foot tall. And when you gouge metal is so hot that it warps it terrible. And I was like, oh my God. And I said, Tom, what am I going to do? And he's laughing. He brought in a big loader, put down uh, pieces of plywood and we ran it over. <laughs> And I was just laughing, like, he says, you can always straighten that out if you have to. <laughs> so, but that was quite a project, and I just love uh, making metal look like something that you think, like, from wood, curving it to uh, making it like a pillow. I've actually made some look like soft pillows. Um, so you can do anything with metal. Quick question on the uh, eagle: How? The, what's the thickness of the metal you're using for the uh, feathers? Oh, the feathers are only 14 gauge, and um, but when you uh, like that eagle there, I can't lift it, so it probably weighs 400 pounds. So the oh no, I made the feathers. Um, little bit thicker. I went to 12 gauge because the people are going to hang on it. Part of a uh, public artwork is a lot of people think it's um, a playground. So I have to, like Tom has instructed me, 
through the years to make sure you have it welded so good that people can't um, get hurt or they can um, jump on it and hang off of it. So that's what, and then you'll see it's all welded on the inside. As strong as you can hang off of it, it's so thick. Uh, yes, on the, um, I hear, I'm seeing how you do this. Uh, if you get certi the certifications at the school, um, oh, how many certs? They're certified to go out and get a job. They go right away, get jobs. Uh, I think it's 90, what's the percentage? 90, 93% right 93% mm -hmm. finish the, the program and get jobs right off the bat. So I think that's a, a cost. There's a question about uh, is, is the cost of the IA welding course covered by FASA, which I'm not sure what that means. Maybe you folks do. Uh, there is some, uh, what is the uh, program that they can um, get financial help oh, from? Yeah, we yeah. have, we okay. have um, several people that actually um, get their, their program pretty much paid for. We have um, the Pulte Foundation puts a lot of our students, at least partially pays for a lot of our students to go. And then there are other um, people that are affiliated with some of the tribes in the area and who get a full, full ride or a partial ride. And we have uh, scholarships through the Rotary Foundation. All of that information is on our website as well. And um, we have plenty of people that come here and, and they actually pay very little of the 13750 on their own because they're able to get scholarships. They have to apply and all of that and they're considered it as competitive scholarship, but they um, they end up doing quite well in a lot of cases. Uh -huh. Very much so. Yeah, because I teach fabricating class at, in this uh, program. Uh, Tom Moran and I, um, what they're learning after they have uh, practiced and learned it, we've, we're creating projects for them to get out of their booths and actually build something with their knowledge. So um, they have a lot of fun. The first one's a simple project, it's called the dice, but they have to build a square. And uh, it's, some have a hard time doing that, but it's, we ha all have fun and they all come out with a nice uh, square eventually. So, <laughs> okay. Have more questions for Ann? You can either unmute your uh, microphone or you can uh, send it through chat. I think we've covered everything in chat. Okay. What do we do? Unmute. I have a question. Uh, where will the eagle be displayed? Oh, the Eagles going to, is a commission piece um, from Sheboygan, and it's a veteran, um, the father of the uh, Matthew Blaskowski is the um, soldier that was killed in Afghanistan, and it, um, his dad had the tree done, uh, a woodcarver came in and did the tree in memory and it rotted and so he came to me to do it in metal so it'll be on state street right by the state street bridge you'll see a little area like a lot that he's getting ready with a nice uh, base and eventually he's going to have it cut it's not the veterans park but he's doing it kind of on his own that's in sheboygan yeah I did put the website in the chat box. It's kind of hard sometimes to follow that, but it's iaiworks.com. Yes. And um, if you go to, uh, the, it's on Facebook. You guys got on Facebook and all over. Yeah. yeah we're, on, we're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram as well. If you want to check out pictures of what we're doing, see some of the students kind of get a feel of who we are, we would love to have you follow us. Thank you. When does, uh, engineer, when does classes start for uh, the uh, welding? You do it every 19 weeks, but when's the next group start? 
the next um, welding group comes in at. So, me again, the next ornamental welding class starts in March. March, yeah. Actually, and we haven't scheduled the date for the basic welding. Things are a little in flux because of COVID, but we have some interested parties and we'll probably be setting a date soon. And then the next comprehensive welding program that goes 19 weeks will actually start in August and run through December. Before the pandemic, you ran how many classes of, of that per year? You, we used to do three and um, now they extended the weeks and now they're down to two classes a year, 19 weeks, uh, August to December and January to May. And then we have youth programs that oh. are running for part of the summer as well. Yeah, then we also in summertime have ornamental welding, yes. workshops, mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah, we don't just go home for the summer. No. <laughs> no summer break, huh? No. <laughs> Well, you're getting a lot of comp compliments, Ann, and, and uh, right. Stephanie, on your uh, tours you've given, or the tour you gave us today, and all the explanation of how welding and cutting and so forth in the metal metal world works. Yeah, it's fun. Out of curiosity, uh, the Eagle, how long have you been working on that? I started uh, this summer, but I had to do uh, three other projects I was working on too. So it's like I did a, I would work on a little bit and, you know, I, I'd be back and forth. So hour wise, um, I kind of wrote it down a little bit. I probably will have 300 hours in it. There's a question about how for the youth classes in the summer, what's the minimum age? I, minimum age, I usually, what do we get in here? Isn't it 12 so or youth? youth yeah. I want to say 13. 13? Yeah, it's right in that age. But that information is also on the website. Yeah, and I did take a 4 H group in here, which um, was done but with approval and everything and it was as young as uh, 10. But the parents have to be with them. Um, each kid has to have a parent. Um, so there is exceptions to it. And those kids, I think the parents had just as much fun as the kids did. I was like, I told the parents, oh, come on, come go. <laughs> so, um, so we do get, um, you know, I've had them as young as 10 in here. But um, the youth programs with no pair supervision I, is 13, is the youngest. Great, thank you. Any uh -huh. other questions from the recipients? From the participants? Okay. I see how much the information is. Do you have fear of any of the techniques? Oh, I have fear of the technique is the torch. And um, I've been uh, always staying away from it, but I I want to do, do all the textures you can with it. I would always ask somebody to do it for me. And I finally said I had to get my big boy panties on and uh, you know get past the fear. Mike Russell that was working on it, uh, just like any of the instructors here, they're very patient and they, they say, and you're not going to blow up, um, you you know, and they would walk it through over and over until I was very comfortable with it. So having people that are patient to get you beyond your fear is very nice. You, I respect every tool in here from rollers uh, my hands, if you look at my hands, you'll see I have some uh, working hands because of uh, getting, being overconfident and not paying attention. 
and uh, you can cut your fingers off. You can, I mean, this is a dangerous area, so you constantly have to be focusing. When you say torch, you mean a gas torch? Yeah, the oxyacetylene torch that Mike was showing brazing on, that can also be a cutting tool. So that, the torch set, I actually bought myself a little portable one because of camp, because I want to do some work up there and I can weld with it. You can weld with the torch set, you can cut, you can do almost anything with the torch set. So I actually got that. So I, um, my all the guys like me to be around because I got the tools. <laughs> oh. I had a question about what's your favorite project out of the ones that you uh, showed us? Well, um, Becca Triumph was, uh, was a real special one to me. I was going through cancer at that time and I had hardly no use out of my arm. And also the recovery of the whole thing of, I can't believe I got, I'm, I'm here, you know? And I would go to the studio and I would work away and it gave me a sense of um, comfort. And I was um, just gave me a sense that I was growing the vines on that sculpture. Um, it was like I was um, re recuperating. You know how some people, you know, for therapy, they'll go therapy. I do my artwork because to me that is therapy and it got me through some um, kind of uncomfortable times. And again, you, you know, you just plug away at it. Next thing I know I got it. And I think if you get around that piece, it has a little more emotion to it. Out of curiosity, have you got a rough count of how many projects you've uh, completed? Oh, I guess uh, out of the, since 2000, 2009 is when I started. So I was started welding. So 10, 11 is probably when I started really making, well, the stuff I received uh, painting, I was combining at first in 2009, uh, 10, I was combining painting with metal. And I was winning a lot of awards with those, but for sculptures being outside, I guess um, I probably done maybe 20, I'd say about 20, maybe more. I guess that's a good one. I'm gonna have to count. Oh. You had quite a quite a number of them that you showed in the PowerPoint. I just I, I figured there must have been more just based on how long you've been doing it. Yeah, no, I started. Um, it's it's been uh, about what, 10, 10 years. I've been working at it, but I've been in the arts for forty years, and I started when I was ten years old. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Any questions, further questions for Ann or? Oh, I guess, I guess we're all, there's a lot of positive feedback on uh, yeah. your uh, work. We appreciate very much Ann taking the okay. time definitely to Take the time for all of us to come in and uh, see what's uh, going on in, in person. As, as I said before, we did get a chance a few years ago to tour the facility, but there wasn't anybody uh, working at that point in time. So you gave us a whole other perspective on uh, all the work that it takes and how you get it done, because that's, uh, yeah. that's quite a task. It's fun. That's the first thing. Is it fun? Yeah, that's right. It's fun. If it was work, you'd have stopped a while ago. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so, okay. okay, thank you, Ann and Stephanie. Uh, I will, uh, if you have any closing comments, either of you? Oh, I just want to thank you. <laughs>